I had three brothers I knew would go in. And uh, I felt like I, we had to go too to help take care of the boys. Well, I went to Fort Jackson from Charlotte. And then uh, in June, we were sent up to Camp Patrick Henry, Virginia, and shipped out to Africa. And we went to landed in Casablanca. And from there, we took a troop train ride up to Basurdi. And I was stationed there for n nine months. I was in Africa, actually, 10 months. I found notes I wrote about our troop train ride from Casablanca to, um, uh, from Casablanca to Basurdi. And um, I found that what I had written years ago, and I didn't know I had it, but I was going through pictures and I found that the other night. So I thought yeah, that would be interesting. The only thing I didn't put on in it was the fact that on this troop train, they almost ate us up with bed bugs. Oh God, well, you scratched all night. <laughs> that was terrible. But, uh, and we had to see rations all the way, except we run into a British outfit and we sold them, pre we gave them our sea rations for kidney pie. Anyway, I got tired of the sea rations. And then when we landed in, our ship was sunk with our supplies. So we landed in Basurdi and we slept at, we let put, they put us in a wheat field. So we slept on the ground with, between the furrows, you know? You know how the, that's where our bedrolls went. <laughs> and we had little pup tents over us. And old Jerry came over every night at nine o'clock. The Mediterranean was loaded, the ships were all there loaded with mustard gas. Uh, then there was a German, um, a British outfit on one side and oh, ammunition dumps on another side. And we were right in the middle of all of this, you know. And oh my God, remember when the war started in Iraq? This brought back so many memories because we were right in the middle and the, our colonel yelled to us, crawl down on your bellies to the bottom of the hill because we were, the sack act was going up all around us. But you know what? None of us got hit. Oh, we saw, we went over to see German planes that went, were shot down that night. I never wanted to see that again. <laughs> you want to you want meeting your husband there? Yes, I forget what the occasion. Oh yes, we went dancing, and he was a drummer. <laughs> he was a drummer, and yes, I met him there. In Africa. In Africa, and one oh, night, one night he came to my tent. I've got a picture of our tent. Our first hospital was just all tents with dirt floors and everything, you know, and. Uh, we could accommodate a thousand patients. And I worked in brain and spinal cord surgery. One of the toughest ones you could get. But anyway, uh, Gordon came over to see me one night and I had this little 18 year old, cute little Salvador, <laughs> is was his name. And he had a ruptured disc. And uh, the night they operated on him, uh, his temperature hit 105, which scared me to death. And I took a good, took his vitals frequently, wrote it all down and sent a note to the doctor's tent. And I told my corpsman, don't you leave until he's on his feet. Well, the doctor came running over there and he ripped all those stitches out. But the next day, penicillin was started and that's the first penicillin that was used in our outfit. Now that I've recorded this in Washington in the Woman's Memorial. You know those shrapnel wounds? They were so bad, they were so bad. And it took weeks to get well. Some of them never got well, they had to be shipped back home. All we had to treat them with was sulfur powder in those days. You know, you'd dress them every day and clean them up and sprinkled sulfur powder on the wounds. And some of them were paralyzed, you know. If it hits their spine, they were paralyzed. Perfect, all the way down. Then they got bed sores, you know. Oh God, it was, it was bad. One guy came in and uh, we got five bad ones in one day. 
and I was in charge of the ward, oh my God. But I went back to check, what well, I checked every one of them over, but this one boy, and I don't even remember his name, uh, I touched his lips with the thermometer, and he screamed at me. And I touched him up here, and he screamed again, very gently. So I called my surgeon. I called the surgeon and told him what was going on. He said, Julia, call the operating room, set it up right now, I'll be there. There was a bullet in the pituitary gland. And he, I saw him get well and go home. You know, I had this one patient. He got shot in the neck and was paralyzed from the neck down. His name was Holden, and he was from Texas. And I had to have an emergency surgery over there after our hospital closed. And uh, anyway, when the hospital ship came in to get all those patients, uh, a boyfriend of mine came to see me. He was captain of a LS, a minesweeper. And he came back to see me. And, and it was sir, he said, well, what can he do? He wanted to do something for my patients since he couldn't do nothing for me. And I told him to bring ice cream. And I'll never forget the day the hospital ship was loading all these patients. This guy with the name Holden was the last one to board. And one of my corpsmen came over and got me and took me over there to see him. And he said to me, thanks for the ice cream. Anyway, he bust, the, one of the nurses on the hospital ship came back and told me that uh, he was so bad they radioed his family to come and meet him at the dock, and he died on the dock. So you see, at least we kept him alive to see his family. Oh, I was proud. <laughs> you know, you had to be on your toes to know what was going on. You felt so bad for these, you know, it seemed that those little boys were, they were little babies. I was 22 years old and older than they were. <laughs>